I talk about quantum stuff so much, sometimes I think I should just rename this channel to Quantum Chronicles with Zabina. It's not just because of my personal interests. There really is a huge amount of research on quantum anything at the moment, and most of it is worth the excitement. We've only just begun to explore how quantum effects can be used for better computation, more precise measurements, custom-designed materials, and much more. And then there's the quantum internet, a solution in search of a problem. Let's have a look. The quantum internet is the idea that we'll send around quantum information across the globe through fiber optics cables or to and from satellites. That it works with quantum information means it can maintain fragile quantum links, which are called entanglement. A lot of countries have invested heavily into this new technology, including the US, the European Union, and especially China, which wants to put an entire quantum network into space. Oh dear. Why would you want to do that? Yes, that's a very good question. Before I say anything more, I need to clear up the myth that a quantum internet would be faster than light. This myth can be found on the pages of Nature magazine and in other places. It comes from the widely propagated but wrong idea that if you do something to one of a pair of entangled particles, the other one changes instantaneously. But this is just wrong. Yes, entanglement is a link between two quantum particles, and yes, that can be non-local, but it's just a correlation between the properties of the particles. It's not a physical link. Let me give you an example. If I break a cookie into two halves, then the exact breaking patterns will fit together. The patterns are correlated if you know one that tells you something about the other. If I put one half of the cookie on the one side of the desk and the other half on the other side, I now have a non-local correlation. Quantum entanglement between two particles is like that. The correlation between their properties, say spin, is locally created, but then you send one particle one way and the other particle the other way, and they'll still be correlated. Now, if I turn one side of the cookie over here, what happens to the other half? Nothing. It's the same with entangled particles. If you do something to one of the entangled particles, what happens to the other is exactly nothing. It's not all that difficult to understand, is it? But I've seen even physicists getting this wrong. I believe the reason for this widespread confusion is that entanglement is frequently and erroneously referred to as Einstein's spooky action at a distance. However, it's not what Einstein meant by spooky action, because there's no action in a correlation, and Einstein wasn't exactly dumb, was he? What Einstein meant with spooky action is the supposed collapse of the wave function. That, however, is unobservable, and since it's unobservable, you also can't send any information with it. That it's unobservable is also why Einstein thought it's not real, but that's another story. Let's come back to the quantum internet. So the quantum internet will certainly not be faster than the speed of light, and indeed that's not the reason countries are investing into it. I believe the major reason for these huge investments is that physicists have somehow managed to convince the military or intelligence organizations that they need a quantum internet to keep data safe. Partly this was based on another myth, which is that quantum computers will be able to break all encryption protocols. However, I think by now governments have understood that this isn't true. There are encryption protocols which are safe from hacking by quantum computers, and the transition to those quantum safe encryption protocols is underway. But it's true that sending information with entangled particles would be ultra secure. That's because if you send a message with entangled particles, particles and someone measures one while it's all the way, that'll change it and that will erase the message. Not only will they not get the information that they wanted, but the intended recipient will know that someone tried to intercept the message. And that's all well and good, except that measuring a quantum state doesn't mean you need a big detector or anything. A measurement is really any sufficiently strong interaction that causes decoherence. And this means that even small disturbances on the way of your quantum message 
will prevent the message from arriving. Does that sound like a practical method of data transfer? It's not what it sounds like to me. To deal with the fragility of the quantum message, you need to very carefully prepare it, which takes time, and then you need to send many copies of each bit of information. The consequence is that the bandwidth of the quantum internet is and will remain miserable, especially from and between satellites. You can't transfer any sensible amounts of data with this in the foreseeable future. Maybe you could use it for some kind of brief authentication protocol or key sharing, but then what? It's not that I think it won't work. I just think that it will be too cumbersome and expensive. I find it very curious that while quantum computers have gotten so much fire for being hyped, the quantum internet has far less promise, but no one ever says anything about it. Though I guess someone just did. They say that no one understands quantum mechanics. I think it's not true. It's totally understandable. If you want to give it a try yourself, check out my quantum mechanics course on brilliant.org. You can take this course without bringing background knowledge. It'll help you to understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or neural nets. Brilliant covers a large number of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. And and they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine, you'll get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.